Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be giving you general study tips, but also study tips geared towards pre-PA prerequisites. So the first tip for general study tips is to break up the monotony, and that means if you are studying at the same place over and over, try somewhere new, try a new coffee shop, try a new library that's in the area that you haven't been to before. Sometimes a new environment will really do wonders and will inspire you and motivate you to continue studying. So the next thing is to reward yourself. Say you've read 10 pages of your book or you've completed an assignment, reward yourself before you move on to the next part of your studying because sometimes when you're overloading yourself with information and don't give yourself breaks or don't reward yourself, it can be just you feel like you're drowning in work. So if you have something to look forward to, sometimes all of that hard work, if you chunk it up with you know rewards with minute, couple minute breaks or a snack in between, um, it doesn't make it seem as harsh. This one really helped me in undergrad because I did take notes that sometimes I kind of slacked off. Um, but if I took the notes pretending that somebody else was going to read them or that a friend was going to need them, kind of had that idea in the back of my mind that somebody else might have to read them, I usually took more in-depth notes and I usually took neater notes so I was able to go back and read more of the information and it made more sense to kind of paired things better than I would have, you know, if I was just jotting down notes for myself. If you pretend that they're for somebody else, sometimes you end up writing better notes. This one also really helped break up the information. So if you were learning about a chap, you know, a subject, I would stop and quiz myself on that section before I moved on to the next topic, um, just to make sure those like facts from that page or that section really were solidified in my memory before I moved on and tried to learn more stuff. So right now I'm not an undergrad, but I'm currently doing like an anatomy coloring book just to get prepared for PA school. But I was coloring it and labeling it, and then once I was done, I would cover the labels and like test myself on each of the structures, you know, before I moved on to the next system in the coloring book. So two things that really helped save me, especially in science classes and like biology and stuff like that, were chunking information and then also reviewing a little bit by day versus cramming. So for chunking, you actually learn better if you pair concepts together. So if you chunk based on like common characteristics or patterns, sometimes it's easy to remember those versus kind of remembering them all separately. And I know cramming, it's really hard not to cram, especially when you have so many classes going on, you know, in undergrad, um, but it really helps if you look at your notes. It doesn't mean you need to go in depth and study everything, but even if you just, you know, look over your notes a little bit between classes every day, you get that exposure and the build, you know, the exposure starts building up and then, you know, by the time the test comes and it's the weekend before the test, you kind of have a little bit of exposure to everything versus like teaching everything to yourself brand new right there. All right, so those are more general tips. So let's start getting into the more uh, subject specific tips. Okay, so we'll start with anatomy. And honestly, when I think about it, most of these tips will also work for physiology. So first and foremost, whiteboards are what saved my life in anatomy. I had like a study room in my college, you know, at my college that was specific for the honor students, and so nobody was in there, and there was a huge whiteboard, and I would go and I would draw out everything that I was learning, and just continually trace, you know, do tracings, trying to figure out, okay, the heart, how does the circulation work, okay, this to this, and I would just draw it and write it on the board a billion times, and then after a while it became I was so used to writing it that it became memory. So another thing that really helped me were tracings, and it's kind of hard to explain without an example. Um, like a very simple example would be food is put into mouth, food is chewed and turned into a bolus, bolus goes down your esophagus, and they're like very step by step of how things happen. Um, so that's really helpful, especially in like more complex things like the heart and like the blood flow of the heart. Um, so if you write those out like step by step, sometimes those are easy to remember the step, and then you get pictures and you visualize it and then you put two and two together and that usually helps me so much with learning kind of the flow of how things happen in the human body. So this one isn't new, but YouTube, obviously YouTube is great for everything, um, but histology was super helpful for. I had a hard time like just differentiating the different types of histology and all of that. It was just, to me, it all looked the same for a while. So Shotgun Histology is a great channel that really broke down everything and explained all the different parts, you know, in each slide. Also, very typical, but if your school has resources like open labs or like check out um, like physical models, do that. Physical models honestly really helps because, I mean, you can kind of picture it on yourself, but it's different, especially for things within the body, um, to see them. Sometimes even like pictures don't really show it all, so you have to kind of see it. If you have a cadaver and they have like an open cadaver day or something, use all the time you can to go and visualize it. 
There are also really great apps and websites. I think it's called like Ken Hub and then um, Get Body Smart. There's a lot of really good apps out there that will allow you to like virtually see a model um, or even like a human body. Um, there's like the Atlas app or something too. It's a really good one for anatomy um, and it allows you to like rotate and you can you know adjust what's on there like in terms of like you can have a full body and you can put only the circulatory system so you can see how that fits within the human body or only the muscles. Um, so those apps are actually really helpful for anatomy. Quizlet is also a lifesaver when it comes to like OIA. So for muscles, you have origins, insertions, and actions, and that is just so much like ugh, so much anatomy. Um, but the Quizlets really helped kind of memorize those and make that a little bit more manageable. So another thing that really helped was mnemonics, and that's kind of like sentences with the letters start with like the words that you want to remember. I'll give you an example. I have to read it because I can't remember this off the top of my head. It's been a long time. But so for your cranial nerves, um, to remember which ones are motor, are motor, sensory, or both, there's like one that says, some say marry money, but my brother says benevolent bride matters more. Um, so each of those start with either M, S, or B, and so that helps you remember um, the cranial nerves when they're listed. Um, the first letter will correlate with whether they're motor, sensory, or both. So there's a bunch of those all over on the internet. I cannot remember them for the life of me right now. Like I said, it's been a long time, um, but they are super helpful. And, you know, they're just quirky, so they, they stick in your brain, and then all of a sudden you realize, like, oh, wow, wait, I know all of those nerves, oh, I know all of those veins, and, you know, you know them in the order, so super helpful. Okay, so now on to chemistry and organic chemistry. So I personally am not one who reads textbooks, but this class, I it helped me so much to read my textbook before I went to class. So I already had a gist of what the professor was talking about, because if I didn't, I was just completely lost. So to help with this, I highly recommend getting like a bullet journal or any kind of, you know, journal where you can write the pages that you need to read, you know, correlating to the lectures so that you have like a list, okay, I need to read pages 1 through 10 so then lecture on Tuesday makes sense and then pages 10 through 25 to make sure lecture on Thursday makes sense. There is nothing more helpful in chemistry than practice problems, and that includes your homework. So other classes, homework could kind of just be brushed off, but chemistry, your homework is so important not only for your grade, but oftentimes your actual tests on your exams really represent what you did in your homework. Because a lot of the times the questions were almost like I, you know, exactly the same, just the numbers were like a little bit different. Um, so you just had to know how to work through the process of whatever that, you know, what you're learning. So if you did the homework problems and you practice that process over and over, it's really not that bad. It's just a matter of plugging in different numbers and getting a different answer. So I am guilty of like sometimes not going to lecture just because I can teach myself better a lot of the times, or at least I feel like I can. Um, chemistry, I was not like that. I had to go to lecture to hear the professor explain it because I'd watch like YouTube videos and I've read the textbook and stuff, but to me it didn't really make sense. It didn't click until I actually went to class and asked questions and talked to the people around me on how to solve these problems. So for Gen Chem and O Chem, for most people, these are very difficult classes and are notoriously like weed out classes for pre-health students. So when you're taking any kind of chemistry class or OCHEM or whatever, try to make this class a priority of your semester. Um, unless you know you're really fantastic at chemistry, then you can focus on other things. But if you kind of struggle in chem, try to not, you know, have as many difficult science classes in your schedule that semester so that OCHEM or chem can be the main focus of that semester. So before you start OCHEM, I highly recommend revising like your dot structures, your functional groups, and then nomenclature because those you kind of start running right off the bat and you kind of have like a brief, you know, review on that and then you just keep going on. OCHEM tends to be more you have to visualize things. So once again, whiteboards are key to drawing everything. Um, you know, sometimes on paper it gets a little bit difficult because you have to erase a lot and like it could just get messy. Um, whereas on whiteboards you can switch things around or mess up on a problem and just erase it quickly. Chem in general is really a subject that you can't just memorize certain things. I mean, obviously you have to memorize certain things, but you have to really truly understand why something is doing what it's doing. Uh, because when you get to a test, if you don't know the actual reason why it's functioning like that, you oftentimes are kind of just lost. So for both Chem and OCHEM, there are amazing resources online. You have the Khan Academy, and then there's Organic Chemistry Tutor on YouTube, and they are both terrific at explaining things. And the best thing about YouTube videos is obviously you can go and replay them a thousand times, slow them down, speed them up, whatever you need to do, and just practice over and over and over because, you know, chemistry in general is a type of subject where you need to do practice problems over and over. It's not like biology where you, you know, you learn a 
topic and then you memorize that topic and then you move on to the next topic. Ochem and chemistry are just, you have to just practice it and you have to understand the concepts. All right, so for biology, microbiology, stuff like that, I think for me at first the hardest thing was learning the words. There's a lot of medical terminology I wasn't really, uh, you know, I didn't really know. So I just would look up like basic like medical terminology quizlets and just practice like the root words, suffixes, prefixes, and all of that. Um, so when I went to actually read my textbook and go to class, I actually had a baseline understanding of what those words meant. Again, just like the other classes, drawing and labeling is so helpful. I found it really helpful to actually draw it out on paper um, and then like have a couple of those and then label them. So I'd like look at a book and like label it with the book and then I'd practice on a blank one and label it by myself without looking at everything. Doing that just a couple times over really helped solidify that into my memory. So I know some bio topics can get really just overwhelming really quickly with the amount of details that are included. So it's best to learn the topics from like super generalized, like just the core, like what does this do baseline and then start introducing more of the facts into it. I felt like once I understood like what this process actually, like the ultimate end, like goal of what that process was, it was kind of easier to put new facts into it and realize that like, oh, okay, this protein does this, which creates this, and then ultimately does that. Um, so once I knew kind of like what each, like the goal of each thing was within that process, it kind of makes sense when you put them all together. And last but not least, read the textbook. And I know I hate reading textbooks, but sometimes it is so much easier because I have really nice diagrams that usually kind of pick apart everything. Um, so like in the last tip, like to start general then go to more specific, a lot of times books will do that and will have really great graphs and like charts and everything to help break that down. Again, a lot of textbooks usually have like questions at the end of the chapter, so do those. Test yourself and see how you are progressing with like, you know, the topics that you're supposed to be learning. And if you're doing well in those quizzes and go ahead and move forward, but if you're not doing well, maybe step back and like look at what you could work on. But all right, that is like an overwhelming amount of tips, um, but just know that there are so many resources and different things to help you out there. There are so many people on the internet that are willing to answer questions and really great YouTube videos and resources. So never be afraid to ask for help from people around you. I know my freshman year, I was like not doing well in chemistry, but I was way too proud to ask anybody for help or even like look up videos for help. Um, so do not be afraid to ask for help. I'm gonna go before I ramble on about like all the other things I did to study because obviously there's a lot of studying in undergrad so I learned a lot while I was doing it. If you ever want to ask me about my journey to PA school or how I studied for certain classes, my Instagram is at whitecoatchasing so you can always DM me there. And if you are enjoying my videos, please hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.